Hi everyone, thanks for joining Float's Kickstart Masterclass. I'm Emily, and over the next 15 minutes, we'll echo the Quick Start Guide to Float by focusing on where Float fits into your existing workflows and tools. The video today will walk you through the steps to make Float your single source of truth. We'll focus the conversation around three main topics, setting up your team settings, adding your team to Float, and adding projects to Float. So let's go ahead and get started. Clicking the little gear just above your photo will take you to the team settings. You'll see some additional settings at the top that are exclusive to your view. There is only one account owner for every team. However, you can have an unlimited number of admin level, level users who are able to make edits to the fields below. Listed admin. As the account owner, you can always reference your subscription details and or manage your team URL. Your team's notifications can be managed by yourself alongside any integrations your team is currently using. Looking at the second suite of team settings, the account owner or admin level users will want to determine the general working hours of the team in the hours and currency segment. You'll find options to set the time zone, work days, working hours, and the day that the work week begins. Work days and hours apply to team members marked full time within their profile. You can, however, set custom hours or different workdays on an individual basis, but you'll need to do that in the, within the profile of the individual. And we can cover that in a moment. We'll skip over guests for now, but we're going to jump into time off. Time off blocks capacity within Float, so feel free to edit our pre-existing um, options here by simply selecting the edit. You can set balances and or change the verbiage to match your company language. Public holidays, you'll see at the bottom here, make it easy to schedule time off across countries and cultures. In this instance, you can see I have half of my team in Italy and another um, group of individuals in New York. You can add regional holidays to specific members of your team without impacting others. Essentially, we're pre-populating all the statutory holidays for a specific region and you just pick and choose which ones your company honors and then bring over the appropriate people. Now the next key step is to add your team. Refer back to your subscription if you're the account owner. There are two types of users within Float. Scheduled users who make up the subscription and guests. People who do not need to appear on the schedule can be added as guests and you can find them in the admin section right here. Guests are users with account access who never appear on the schedule. Remember, you can have an unlimited number of guest users in Float who can view or edit the schedule for free. To invite a guest, simply select Invite. Populate their name, email address, select the appropriate access, access rights, and simply invite them to join Float. Typical types of guests could be finance looking to run reports, project managers who are not physically allocated work but are responsible for scheduling and allocating work out to their team, or other admin level users who need to facilitate the tool. Now we wanna add the people that are found within your schedule. People in Float are your full or part-time employees, temporary contractors, or any other resource you want to schedule within Float. Adding a new person to your team is easy. Let's go do it. So you're gonna to jump to your Manage tab here. So you have your Schedule, your Manage tab, and Reports. So jump over to your Map page. Now you can see I've already added one user, and that's Brittany. I'm gonna show you how we can add a user really simply. See the plus in the top right-hand corner, and you're gonna select Add Person. You can see an E just adjacent here, and that's because you can also press Shift E on your keyboard to open that same window. Let's walk through adding our first person together. I'm going to add my colleague Quang here. I'm going to hold off on adding his email for the time being. And the reason I'm doing so is because once you add an email and access right, that does invite Quang to, to access Float. Now he will receive an email with an invitation to join Float, but until I have the bulk of my team set up, I want to hold off until inviting him to the tool. So we'll just add Quang for the time being. I don't have his picture on file, but I could add a photo. We we'll select his role here, sales lead and A for North America. I'm going to add him to the sales team. Perfect. Now, tags are key attributes that are unique to your organization. All of these fields here you can search and filter by whether you're looking at the schedule, project plan, or report. 
So I may decide to add 2023, Quang said 2023 higher. He's working out of North America. I want to filter that at some point in time. And he's senior. So I'm going to add that as well. Just senior. I'm going to accidentally remove that one. There we go. Now I'm going to say that Quang is an employee, but he could either be a contractor or a placeholder. I'm going to give him an hourly rate. I'm going to hold off on giving his access, but you can watch our video on access rates in the future. Now, as we talked about, he is um, already listed as a full-time empl employee by default, but I'm going to set him as a part-time employee because actually Quang works short days, Monday and Fridays, lucky guy. And we're going to hold off from adding him on any projects. Now you can also tie him to the appropriate region. We know that Quang is in North America, so I'm going to give him the New York public holidays. I'm going to say Quang is a remote employee working out of North America. Now I'm going to leave that is for the time being. The more data that you put into these profiles, whether it's the profile of the person or the project, the richer your data set can be. But this can be a work in progress. So we'll go ahead and we'll add Quang. Now that Quang has been added, he's going to automatically populate in my schedule. I can navigate back to my schedule tab to double check. And there he is. Now you can also add a person directly from the schedule using the same functionality I just spoke about earlier. That's Shift E or add a person this way. Now, what if you have a number of employees you want to add at one time? We do have a couple of options for that. So you can navigate to the import button in the top right hand corner here and press upload a file. If you download our people template, you'll then be offered a solution to bulk load some people within your float profile. You can do the same for projects. Other options that we have to import people if you just select import here, is to sync with another app. Now remember, the only the account owner can utilize this functionality to bring in people via the API, Zapier, or one of our integrations. With your team assembled and the roles defined, now you're ready to start adding projects. Project help, projects help you organize your task, team, and important milestones together in one place. Adding a new project is also easy. Think of your Manage tab as a database. So we've just started building out our people database, and now we're going to go over to our projects. So you can see I already have one project in there. Projects, there's a couple more options as to how you can add them. You can simply navigate again to that plus sign in the top right hand corner and add a project that way. Looking at that little P, you can also press Shift P on your project window on your keyboard, and that will open an option to create a new project from scratch or from a template. Now you may already have some templates or you may want to create one. So you can select manage templates and create a template. Perhaps all of your clients for one particular line of business have a similar outline. Templates are a great way to save time and keep consistency. Alternatively, you can click into an existing project and simply duplicate it. You still have the option to use our CSV file what you're going to do is you're going to select again, import, and you're going to download this project template, complete the core fields, and pop it back in using this upload CSV file. Lastly, we also have a number of integrations that are managed by the account owner that can also help to bring in mass projects and other types of data. For the time being, let's go ahead and manually add a project. We're going to select new project. Now you can, however, just like the people profile, complete certain fields within this, this profile here. However, the more data you put into float, as we said before, the more data you're going to get back. So let's call this project Facebook, Facebook branding. Now we'll not assign them to Google, but to Facebook, a new client, client I'm adding. We'll leave the color as is. That's pretty fitting. Add any notes, even if I want to call out a colleague of mine, Brittany, please ensure project details are correct. This will send a notification to Brittany for when she logs in next. I'm going to call this May 23, add a tag there because this is when the project is due to launch, just to give myself a little notice. And I'm going to say that it is London because this is for the Facebook branding London office. Now you do have some options. You can say the project is billable, non-billable, or a combination. You can go ahead and set the budget. For the sake of this demo, let's say hours by project, and we're gonna say 
600 hours. Then we're going to add the team over. I'm going to add Brittany and Quang. Milestones. Milestones in float are key dates you want to be aware of that you're not allocating out individually, but they have visibility across the entire platform. So we'll say maybe there's a client on site on the Thursday here. We'll add that milestone. And the launch we talked about was in May. So let's add a nice launch date, maybe the 15th. We'll add that as well. Now tasks are what you're physically allocating out. So remember that this is a billable project, tentative. I'm gonna add some admin level work and I'm gonna mark that task as non-billable. I'm gonna add some branding, scoping, and review. Now I can go ahead and lock this task list, but if I want less, more flexibility with the labels and for other people on the team to be able to create additional task labels, I will not lock that task list. So we'll go ahead and we'll create that project. And you can see now, just like our friend Quang was in our schedule, that project is now gonna be in our project plan, okay? Now that you've added people and projects, you're ready to go ahead and start scheduling and planning your team for success. You'll wanna take a look at the resource planning video to learn how to first schedule a task and start scheduling. We also offer an additional training topics that provide more granular insights into these topics. So do keep an eye out for our live training calendar. Lastly, if you just navigate to the question mark here, you'll have access to our live chat. Never hesitate to ask a question or reach out to them. We are always here, happy to help. Thanks so much for your time today, and we'll speak soon. Bye-bye.